Hey gang, so we're back with uh, Shields and Swords, and I wanted to give you a quick update on progress. We've played nine and a half, or should I say, ten and a half turns, and we've kind of reached that point where now uh, some of the special rules for the scenario start to kick in. And Harold uh, Hadrada it was the leader for the Vikings, <clears throat> and once the Vikings reach eight units eliminated, which is here, uh, we then lose him as a leader. He's killed in the battle, and quite aptly, we had a little battle on the bridge here, so maybe he died on the bridge. And then uh, Tostig Goodwinson uh, takes over, and what that does is reduces the number of uh, commands that can be issued for a given turn, and now we can only issue one command. Now, I haven't really seen that as being a detriment at the moment for the Vikings treating them as being on pretty much on the, de the defensive here. Uh, as the, you know, because usually you're either moving to plug a hole or you're popping yourself into shield wall such that uh, you are trying to gain the defensive benefits of that. I have a, I was not very offensive with the Vikings, and every time I was... <laughs> <laughs> one of those things where I just get rolling fives and sixes for all the combat, so I was hurting myself more than I was helping the situation. Whereas the Anglo-Saxon guys have rolled really well, actually. Uh, a small handful of fives and sixes and everything else has been ones and twos. And when you use the pitch battle concept, which seems to be the only way to go here, uh, that, give, that bumps you up a class, and then if you have these modifiers where you've got, as we've mentioned before, so here there was some battle, right? And it's an A-class unit there that we were fighting. Uh, we had three A-class units here. So I had two additional units. I get to subtract two from my die roll. Um, right, so that so if I roll a two, it becomes a zero, which is really good on the combat results table. If it was a six, it becomes a four. And with the, with the pitch battle uh, card uh, being played or the double combat, double phase being played and making it a pitched battle, that bumps me up a class, which means I move up the table and it's more deadly as we go up the table to double A, from A to double A or B to A, as the case may be. So I advanced I advanced into here. And we, we took that first half of the bridge. Now, it has taken us 10 turns to kind of get to this situation, but a lot of that's me being, uh, um, I guess, perhaps a little, little more cautious than it might normally be, just to kind of work out the system to see how it works. And also trying to assess what this, the tactics and the strategies might be. So anyway, so that's kind of what's going on. Uh, the shield wall offers a, a reduction in the uh, attacker's <coughs> uh, uh, column that he is, uh, or row that he's on. So you can, he moves him from A to B, right? So pitch battle and shield wall, I, th I think in essence, negate each other. And then it just becomes how many units adjacent do I have of the same type or or two of a two of a different type will give me a minus one on my uh, DRM on my die roll. So anyway, so it's been fun so far. We're, we're cranking away on it. Got a little flanking action going here, which uh, has been tried to be slowed down by these guys, uh, slowed down by the Vikings here. But we've uh, I did a double move and reinforced that at the Ford. Brought two A-class units over there, and they're uh, starting to peck away at the edges. So it's looking pretty grim for the Vikings at the moment, but they do have uh, reinforcements coming in over here that will that are double A units, and they they might might make themselves uh, felt. Although there are a substantial number of units here left to go, we've taken one, two, three, four step losses and lost one unit so far. Talk to you soon.